Hi, welcome to Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris. Today, we're going to be talking about the photoelectric effect. And this is a really important experiment that was done in the late 1800s. And it was so important because it changed how we viewed light. Before it, we thought of light as a wave, an oscillating electric field. Afterwards, we thought about light as a particle sometimes and a wave at other times. So what we're going to do in this video is talk about this experiment and its result in a qualitative way. And in another video, we're going to do some of the math associated with this experiment. So what's the photoelectric effect? Well, basically, as you can see in this experimental schematic below, if you put light down on a piece of metal, so you shoot light at metal, if that light has the right characteristics, it will pop electrons off. And here it is shown going up to this energy analyzer. And basically all that does is it tells us how fast our electrons are going. So there's two things to keep in mind when we're doing the photoelectric effect. What's that light like that we're putting down on it? And how much energy do those electrons have that are coming off? And the reason this experiment was so important was because if light was a wave, we should get some very particular results in this setup. And we actually got very different results. And so what I'm going to do now is talk about what we expected and then what we actually saw. So what do we expect to see? Well, if light is an oscillating electric field, what that means is if we make light brighter, no matter what color it is, the electric field gets stronger. And so what we'd expect is if you're trying to pull a charged particle, an electron off with an electric field, all you gotta do is get a strong enough electric field. All you have to do is make your light bright enough. So one thing we expected was that any color of light if it was bright enough, if the electric field was strong enough, could eject electrons. So any color of light, the, the wavelength and frequency don't matter. All that matters is how strong that electric field is, how bright that light is. The second thing we expect is as you make that light brighter, you get higher and higher energy electrons. So basically, you put in more energy with that light, you have a stronger electric field, you're going to accelerate that electron more. In fact, neither of these things were observed. So both of those turn out to be wrong. We didn't see them, and yet we'd expect that if light was just a wave. What we actually saw is that electrons are only ejected by some colors. So it turns out that not all colors will eject electrons. You have to get far enough towards the blue side of the spectrum, what we know to be the higher energy side of the spectrum, before electrons start popping off. The second thing we saw is that brighter light didn't lead to higher energy electrons. Instead, it just led to more electrons. So those electrons were the same energy. They were moving the same speed when they came off, but there were more of them when we made a light brighter. Not what we'd expect if light was just a wave. The final thing is, is if we want to increase the energy of those electrons, we don't change brightness, we change frequency. So higher frequency light did give us higher energy electrons. So when that experiment was first done in the late 1800s, people didn't understand it. And it wasn't until Einstein proposed a solution in the early 1900s that we actually figured out what was going on. And he said something pretty outrageous. He said, let's not think about light as a wave, let's think about it as a packet. It's more like a BB in this case, he says. And these packets of light have an energy that's given by the frequency of the light. And that's what this expression tells us down here. This is his proposal. He says the energy in this light packets is equal to the Planck's constant H times the frequency of the light. So he says that the energy in our light packets is determined by frequency. And I think that will help us understand the results we saw in the photoelectric effect. So below in this graph, we see plotted some results from a photoelectric experiment. And what we have on the Y axis is the kinetic energy of the electrons in uh, electron volts. And so basically, as you get higher and higher on this graph, you're getting electrons that are faster and faster. On the y-axis, we have frequency. So as we go from left to right, we're increasing the frequency of that uh, light. And Einstein's proposal helps us understand this picture. What happens is, when we're at lower frequencies, so over here, you see this red line is at zero. That's basically telling us, when I shine light on it of lower frequencies, I don't see any electrons. They don't have any kinetic energy. And it isn't until we get to some critical amount of energy, or I'm sorry, amount of uh, some critical frequency that we start to pop off electrons. So right there, at about 10 times 10 to the 14th hertz in this case, we start to pop off electrons. And that's why this line now rises. And it continues to rise as we increase frequency, just like we said on the last side. As you increase frequency of our light, you get higher and higher energy electrons coming off.
And so Einstein's explanation helps make sense of that. Why? Well, because if the energy of these packets coming in and striking the metal is proportional to its frequency, then if we have light with too low a frequency, it'll never pop off an electron. Because electrons are basically glued into our solid. There's all these attractive forces, the positive nuclei holding those electrons in. And until our packet gets enough energy to launch that electron off the metal, it won't pop off. Once it does have enough energy to separate the electron from the metal, that's at these higher frequencies over here, well then the more energy that BB has that whacks that electron, the faster that electron's gonna plop off. So Einstein proposed the solution. He says the only way we can understand the photoelectric effect is if we think about light as a packet. And importantly, when we do that, that helps us think about the kinetic energy of the electron that comes off as a function of the frequency of the light we put in. And that's what this expression is telling us. Here we have the kinetic energy of our electron. So this is Ke of our electron. And it's important to keep in mind here, we have two things. We have the photon coming in and the electron coming off. And so these two halves of the equation, one half deals with the kinetic energy of the electron and the other half deals with the photon or the particle of light. So this is our light packet. And if the light packet has a certain amount of energy, well, some of it goes into pulling off that electron. And that's what this is right here, the binding energy. So basically, what that's telling us is that if I wanna think about how much energy my electrons has, I take how much energy the light I put in has and subtract out that energy that's holding that electron down onto that metal. Now, interestingly, we can think about this as a y equals mx plus b equation. If we think about the kinetic energy as being y and the slope being m for Planck's constant and x being our frequency, and then the um, binding energy would be our y-intercept. That tells us that if we fit this line here, our y-intercept, this b, will actually tell us the binding energy. So if we look at a plot carefully, we can actually tell what metal is there by looking at that y-intercept. Why is that? Well, different metals hold onto their electrons with different strengths. So some metals hold on really tight and some less strongly. And so we can actually do a kinetic energy experiment. We can do the photoelectric effect experiment and figure out what metal we have. Here we have this graph extended and you see there's this best fit line that is cutting down below the x-axis and eventually it intercepts the y-axis right here. That's that B, remember. And so it intercepts at negative 4.3. And so that negative sign goes away because of the negative sign in our equation there. And that tells us that the work function of the metal we're dealing with here is 4.3 EV. Work function is just another word for binding energy. So the binding energy of that electron is 4.3 electron volts. And that actually lets us identify the metal. And so if I come over to a chart here that shows us all the different metals we have, then you can actually identify what we have. And if we look through this chart, we'll see that zinc has a binding energy of about 4.3 electron volts. So this turns out to be the photoelectric effect for zinc. All right, so let's review. The photoelectric effect was a very important experiment that taught us to think about light as particles. And those particles have energy proportional to their frequency. If we do a photoelectric effect experiment, we can actually use the binding energy to figure out what metal we have. And that actually has all sorts of applications. Thanks for watching Real Chemistry. If you have any science. questions about the video you just saw, please ask them in the comments below. Please also subscribe to receive updates about new videos and to get easy access to my YouTube station. Thanks for watching.